release the kick, and come back. In one cycle, smooth as you can, like this. Okay? Right leg, okay? I each. Knee, squeeze and release. Sam, Chi, Go, Rock, Chi, Hach, Ku, Ju. Other leg. Each, Knee, Sam, Chi, Go, Rock, Chi, Hach, Ku, Right leg each. Alternate knee. Sam. Shi. Go. Rock. Shi. Hach. Ku. Ju. Again. Good. Right leg. Arch up. Then relax. Arch up. Just a little, little information on my daily, okay? So, you're my helper, you're my sister. Okay, step sideways. Okay. We like the, the beginning part and the ending part of the, the kick to be in this position. Like that, okay? We like to be in this position. This, this is a good mechanical position like that. Okay, okay. so let's say it's just straight up like that, and the leg is in this position. Okay, The weight of the leg will push down like that. I'm just kind of accentuating it a little bit like that. So where, if I push this leg down and see resist me, where, where is the pressure of this motion? Right here, no? So mm -hmm. like this, right? The muscle called hip flexor is going to be Okay? Like that. Okay? That muscle that's resisting me is, is actually connected to the lower back. So when, when there's pressure going down, it's just holding it, fighting against me, that, that's straining your lower back. Okay? If you have a, let's say, uh, a pole and you attach a rod like that, right? And this junction right there, that's gonna be the weak link, right? You could break there. So one way, in terms of engineering, I could solve this, is you could do this, and you could do this. So now, the weight of this will go into the main bar, and then it gets transferred like that. Does that make sense? Yes. So, now the hip is quite quite a bit strained, okay? So what I gotta do is go like that, like that, so that the weight of the leg, when the kick is coming back, goes back into the spine and out the supporting leg. So see this is so when the kick comes back, it's gonna go boom. If I go like that, now it's all here. Okay? You can see how if I drop my knee after the kick. Right there, right there. That strains your hip, okay? This muscle is going crazy. And if you do enough of them, it's gonna, it's gonna go, it's gonna injure itself, okay? So, after the kick, front kick, be careful not to drop your knee like that, okay? It's gonna go like that. See, from here, I'm going straight down. Yeah. You can say, oh, no, I'm not that flexible. Well, you can just do this, okay? As long as you don't go like that after the kick. Look at this bone, this, this yes. upper bone. After the kick, it stays right there. After the kick, it stays. So I'm talking about this. Like that. See how much is moving after the kick? Yes. Those are little things that will help you from keeping yourself from getting injured. Especially our, our artists, we do lots of repetitive motion into the air. So because we're going to hit stuff, that energy has to go somewhere. So we call, we call, if you dissipate those energy through the body, out to the floor, it's a very healthy movement. Right? If it impinges on some parts, then that's going to, almost like your body's attacking itself. 
but back. You're constantly pinging your symptom. Mm -hmm. That's a weird one because the deep down you get funny muscle strain and you just can't find it. It just hurts, hurts, and it's gonna be on your down on the day. Mm -hmm. Okay? You dig it, dig it, you go to massage therapy, you adjust the cardio, this and this. You had it for a long time. And it all came from bad kicking. Most likely. I can't say for sure because everybody's different. But uh, uh, I'm just speaking through experience. <laughs> okay? I hurt myself so many times. <laughs> just through not being introspective. Okay, so. Be very mindful, so when you kick, be really aware yeah, that this leg bone doesn't move after the kick. It comes back into the bone. Yeah, then when this, we call this lever arm in mechanics. So when the lever arm is short, you'll move through space quickly, right? So you don't want this leg to extend until when you have to. So by right there, then it's gonna go back to being coiled again. So that way your leg moves rather quickly. I'm talking about this, like that. See how the whole leg is strained versus like that. Okay? Now, as you get better at this, try not to lock your knees like this. Okay? That's a little micro trauma in your knee joint when you do this, like that. If you ever watch this in slow motion, you'll make you cringe, I swear. <laughs> First time I saw this, watching myself kick slow motion. Right around here, the knee joint goes. Yeah, like that, you see this huge locking in the knee joint. Mm -hmm. You don't feel it because you're going fast enough so you get used to it, but it needs to, this is part of a, like a rope. So when I move the rope, like that. So from this message, then we have, once again, once again, rope. Okay, same thing, all the kicks, all the kicks. Mm -hmm. So you want to treat that whole leg like a, Smooth work, not like a hinge. Also for function, this kind of technique keeps your legs from getting caught. Okay, there's one disadvantage in MMA. You have the tie round husk kick. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. They come like this. They go like that to cut the leg down. But only problem with this is a wind that allows a person to watch you do that, and it, as it comes around, you grab it. Okay. That's only this thing. As soon as it gets grabbed, it does this. So. Our way of kicking the ball is one. So it's very difficult to grab something that, that, that juts out of that. Not to say it can't happen, but I'm just saying. Okay? All right. My idea. Let's try it now. Try it on. Today looks already much better. Okay, good. Keep going. Make sure you play with both legs and don't hold your breath. Okay? At the same time, don't blow out either. Just relax. Let the chest and the breath move with the table. Keep knee high, knee high up. Look at it. Before you go, mm -hmm. that one. Just, just a little bit, just, just on your desk, yep. And everything else will just follow. Yep. And keep telling it to relax. It doesn't have to have an explosive step. Just, I'm gonna move it. Move. Mm -hmm. That's better. Because a lot of times I'm kicking out, get that kick back in the knee. And that's from this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Two. It's like someone's playing with a rope like this. Like those rhythmic gymnasts with a rhythm. Mm -hmm. Move the rhythm, move the rhythm. Hi. You mean at the end, the double kick? Yeah, the double kick. So you're in this position, right? Yeah. Yeah. First one is more like a fake kick, so you don't have to actually finish the kick. It goes up or like up. So you want to lift the knee up, bam. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now you got to get started. I have to finish this talk. Okay. <laughs> I can't give you 20% of the talk. Uh, Frank here, believe it or not, 
I just showed you the, the kicking leg part. But that's only about 20% of the whole, whole thing. Other 80 comes from your base leg. You gotta be more mindful about the base leg. A lot of times we do front kick and all your tension is on the kicking side. Okay? But it actually comes from you managing the base leg. Okay? So let's imagine that your base leg is like a compression spring that you can squeeze it down. Okay? If you take a spring and compress it, it's going to give you a potential energy to do this. No? Yeah, that way. So this release of energy from this coil spring is your kick. Okay? So you already established the kicking leg being very compact and smooth. Now I'm going to concentrate on, on this the base leg. Okay? Uh, this is an exaggeration. Okay? Sometimes to make a point, I have to exaggerate a little bit. So, Trying to copy it exactly, I'm just trying to prove a point. Does that make sense? Hey. In the seminars in the past, a lot of the Japanese teachers would exaggerate a point, and we think that that's what he wanted. And they're wondering, why, why do you punch like this? Because you say, take it by then. So, we go like that. Okay. Lost in translation. Okay. Compress, release. Compress, release. So, that release is the energy of my kick. Compress, release, compress, release. I want you to, for people with keener observation, my hip flexors are actually relaxing during the hip like that. It relaxes like this. It's, it's allowing me hip to expand like that. So, so I'm compressed. I'm just thinking most of my energy is right here. I'm going to compress. When I release, I get energy out of that release. Like that. I'm going to compress and I'm going to release it. It's almost like a mousetrap, I set it, latch it, and I'm going to touch that latch and I'm going to point like that. Point. Okay, it's in the base leg. Mm -hmm. Once you get that, then you have 100%. <laughs> Kick in leg and the base. Okay, so why don't you play with it to see if you can tap into it. See, nothing makes, when you see something visually, it's like just a little kit. But when you could actually do it, then you're going to go, oh yeah, I got it. Okay? At that moment, you could describe it in your own words. And in fact, you could even teach it to somebody else using a whole set of your words. Okay? Until then, you're going to just kind of copy me and repeat my words. But uh, you got to get to a point where it becomes yours. Okay? Any information should be like that. Right? You got to take ownership. Okay, so figure, out, figure this out as best you can. So compress, release, compress, release, compress, release, compress, release. More relaxes. No effort to. That was good. See, that was good. When you get it right, it looks like a uniform movement. It's just he looks like natural, like you're not even trying. Press, release, press, release. But still some pendulum, right? Slow it. Pendulum moves like that. When you have single stroke, is that still a pendulum? I don't know. Mm. My bracelet punch, if you snap it once, is that still considered vibration? Or is it more the, the result of something that, that we call vibration? If I punch something and, the, and the, if I hit it in a way that that could be a vibration. Can I can answer a question about technique. It, it ends up being a vibration, but it's not exactly the same as. Yes. That one's a little deeper than that. We talk about that this week. Do your job. Oh, they're everything. Put it all together. So what causes that knee snap back on the front kick? Where you get all that shock from the knee? It's so overextension? And the or or are you like thinking that. that you're going to hit something? Or are you thinking that's the key method. And, and this becomes almost like an after effect. 
And get the kick is this is the entire kick. And, and the hitting part is part of the kick, but it's not the end of the kick. So you gotta just reset where the end is. But oftentimes, because you think this is the end, we lock the crap out of that knee joint. Then, then in, our, in reality, the timing is off then, because if you lock it, it's hard to turn on the hamstring to bring it back. Because it's gonna go gunk gunk. So you can't contract the hamstring until this is done. That's how you tear a hamstring. You're starting to contract the hamstring wow. while it's going out. So hamstring is just it's, it's susceptible to that particular injury. The sprinters get it because there's huge muscles going on like that, and, and it's, it's coming on too early. So the hamstring is trying to make your leg do that, but this one's too strong. So it's, that's why linemen have the uh, hamstring problems because they're quasi like the size of cannons and the hamstring. If, if they don't have good mechanics, yeah. And if they don't have good stretch and routine, they don't have good. That's better. That's better. It's getting better. Okay, it's getting better. Okay? So, how do you know when, it's, when you get, you feel like the whole kick goes, it almost leaves your body without much effort? That's, that's when you kind of start to know that you, you get it. Meanwhile, you have to isolate, like kicking leg. What was about kicking leg? Oh yeah, I gotta remember about the ankle, the knee, and all that, okay? Then how about the spring stuff? You're gonna have all these kind of process in your mind before it catches up, okay? But, but I would encourage you to stay on it. Stay on it, okay? Okay, let's keep going, okay? Like, can I say like that? So for this part, I'll just give you a simple instruction of if you had a, if you could locate where your knees are, okay? And in the middle of your knee joint, you gotta imagine this because it could be inside the knee. So there's a, like a, a dot inside the knee joint. And you have two of them, right? All of you have two knees, okay. Then that line, this dot will connect with the line to the bottom of your pelvis, okay? We call it pelvic floor, but just basically you'll have a Triangle. You with me? Make sure the triangle. Okay. Once you visualize something in your mind, you also want to activate it in your body. So feel the triangle by making the triangle like a little bit smaller than it wants to be. So triangle like that, and you're gonna pull the lines towards the center so that you feel like it's okay. Make sure when you activate that your knee joint, they don't actually move. Okay, you're gonna hold it in place. Then it's like a rubber band, you're pulling, and you feel that little elastic tension. Okay. All right. So your mission now is to just, feed, just maintain your feeling of that elastic triangle. Okay? All right, so we're going to step and punch. Uh, each step. Okay, stay alert to that triangle. And shaman is what the position you're in. So if you could contract the upper groin muscle, this right here. It's going to pull, it's going to set your pelvis like a 90 degrees to the front. Okay? Then the rear leg will push you. So those two things. Upper groin muscle, rear leg thrust. Okay, just keep pushing. I need that. And for people that attended the three, three, three part session, you know, keep, keep that active. The middle is very alert. Thank you. Son. Okay. We're out of space, we got to turn around. Let's just turn around. Like this. Punch that way. Same thing. Right. Each. E. San. G. Return. E. Same thing. We'll just repeat so we get a chance. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Go. Go. Upper groin, rear leg thrust. Like you did earlier with the normal standing, try to, try to feel the edges of your feet, especially your back foot. Okay? So if I'm standing like this, I'm not going to feel the edge of that foot. I'm going to adjust it, I feel like I can feel the edge. Okay? All right, I'm going to keep stepping. This stance called shaman, and it's not going to be very long for most of us. Okay, okay ready? Each. E. Sun. G. 
this side, give it a little, little pressure. Little pressure. Oh. Okay. okay. Now, people that are punching, try to monitor where that energy is coming. Where is it going? Okay. How are you receiving that energy? So, if if you get it pushed, right, and you feel it in your neck and shoulder, that the shoulder position is probably not in a good place. Remember we did earlier this, this whole thing with the, the head pushing back? It's the same kind of sensation. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll get a step forward. Okay. Knee. Check that connection. Okay? You don't need to push hard, just enough so that, that the person kind of feel. It's on. She. I have room for one more. Oh. Okay. okay. Now another side. Okay. Each. Make sure you're not leaning. Spine upright. Dissipation. Okay. Even though our, our body, you won't get pure 100% from top scientific, but, but at least you get that idea. All right. So, for example, if the shoulder is way up like that, and the impact reaction force could come back, right? And make this punch less effective. You know what I mean, okay? All right. As a pusher, I've, I've done this long enough, so I'm very really <coughs> sensitive with, with the energy. So, when I push, if she's, if she's connected correctly, I actually feel the floor. Because my energy is going through her, so it feels like I'm doing this. I actually feel the floor because my energy is going through the body and I can feel the back foot. Okay? There's no magic. I'm just, you get more sensitive with more than you do this. Okay? So, I don't feel the floor right now. <laughs> so, so, we have to figure out how to, how to help. Okay? So, one thing, I would do is shorten your stance just a little bit. Yes, yes. Then, good. Okay, let's go. In the muscle, we we'll talk about this and the rear leg thrust. Yep. Yes. Now you see that the spine is upright from the side, if you can watch the side like that, right? So the stance looks good because I think, from my view, each leg is active. Do you know what I mean if I say active? Mm -hmm. It's not like like a, like a stick where it's just the, 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 like a support. It's on. Okay, the muscles are like awakened. Okay, so now. Okay. Yep. So I would contract the stomach a little more. Okay. Yep. You don't need to lean into me. So don't forget the groin muscle back leg. Groin muscle back leg. Always this contraction. Yep. Groin muscle and back leg. Yes. Yes, that's it. That's it. Okay. Now move. Yeah, I just felt the foot. Okay. So this is, we used to call it when I was growing up in karate. Connection. Our teachers call us say, connection. You must have proper connection. And I have no idea what he's talking about. Okay? 
I just thought you just tighten your muscles as hard as you can. That's connection. Yeah, my muscles are connected. And he's like, no, let's contract. No. Is there a difference? <laughs> he's like, of course. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't just tighten as hard as I can and do my technique. Isn't that good enough? It's like, no. <laughs> That's a waste of energy, okay? So anyway, if you get to the point, if you can feel it, okay? Oftentimes, you lose this energy track when this is this kind of relation is not quite there. So if I let this go a little bit like that, now we call this energy leakage. So when the impact reaction force comes back, it's those little looseness is where the energy leaks out. Okay? You know what I mean by energy leakage? Like when the impact reaction is coming back into me. If I have a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this, that's all leakage. Leakage. Okay? It makes the punch less effective. More importantly, it's kind of it's gonna pain those areas so it could be uh, susceptible to injuries. Okay? We're talking about it's a low grade repetitive injury. So you might not feel it tonight or tomorrow, but over time, after thousands of repetitions, your body will begin to scream at you. So this sometimes I say it's like when you twirl a pencil around the river, it goes in like that. Okay? And the rear leg will match this energy by pushing. Yeah. So she has a pelvic floor engaged, so it would be she's got the connection to the feet, but there would still be something missing slightly. Yeah, and sometimes that's going to reveal itself when, when this when this team is back. She'll have you you'll trick her into engaging that. Yeah, 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 yeah by just pushing. And, and you know, when. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have a little bit of a It's just going to be. Yes, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. that's nice. You can see yeah. those legs are like, mm, there's a good stance there. Okay? Yep. That's it, that's it. Okay. So, uh, we're doing the hardest technique first, so. Step in pump, step mechanics is, as I call it, top three most, one of the top three most difficult things in karate. Okay. So we, now, we're in our brains a lot, so. Uh, okay, so let's try it by yourself again, okay? So I'll count for you and we'll punch, okay? So you want to feel the edges on the floor, the edges are on especially your back foot. So position the back foot until you feel that edge nicely placed on the floor, okay? All right, we're going to step in punch height, each. He, some, she. Okay, let's turn. Okay. Each. Okay, make an adjustment. Make an adjustment if you need to make an adjustment. Okay. Make an adjustment. He, some. Okay, turn. Each. E. Sam. She. Turn. Each. E. Sam. She. Okay, I turn. Again with your partner, okay? This time, we're not going to push them, okay? This time, you're going to watch them. All right. All right, left leg forward, everybody in the back. You're going to step and punch. Okay. So this is what we're going to do, okay? Your eyeballs are looking at that front leg. Your eyeballs are looking at this knee, okay? Get it? And what you're looking for is that knee deviating to the middle. Okay? Yeah. So, for example, for example, okay, okay, okay. Double the okay. I'm not gonna have a knee, only have a knee, okay? Each. 
And when I did that, that means that's where the knee would go. Knee. San. Chi. Okay. Okay. okay? So I want her to know when that knee goes inward like that. Okay? So this is kind of tricky to fix. Okay? But the first step of fixing this, if you have it, is in the middle of the step, if you could feel the edge of your foot during the middle of the step, right in the middle, if you feel the edge of the floor, your knee's not going to go off. Simple as that. If you lose the edge, you get the knee will cave in. That's it, okay? You're going to be alert enough to feel that edge, okay? Quiet, step, step in. Keep stepping.
So, Caitlin, you have to do it. Yeah. So, you have a younger sister. You're the third. Oh, really? So, is it the same one and the same two? The same one and the same two? The same one and the same two. You haven't read the Catholic? Have you read Catholic? Have you read there's thing one and thing two. They're twins. I can't tell which one is which. So what is your name? Anna. Anna? How do you spell it? A and A. And your sister? Why does it call you Anya? Anya. like a mouse trap and you wind it back and you latch it. Now that thing has a potential, right? Because if I release, it's gonna go boom. So you could call that like pre-activation. You have to actually manually do it for your body because your body won't do it automatically, okay? Uh, certain cases you can, but in this one you have to. Learning to contract your hamstring is very difficult because it's not automatic. You have to teach yourself. So when I'm like this, Actually, I'm saying groin muscle, but it's actually, this is part of hamstring too, okay? I just didn't say it because it's too much stuff, mm -hmm. okay? But anyway, it's like this. And my leg is naturally loaded for movement. If I stand, let's say, just like that, and I could harden the muscle by just contracting like that, but I can't go forward, okay? I'm all locked up. For me to go forward, I have to do a few things. Watch. Okay. I need to adjust the foot so that this leg could push me forward. Because I'm not pre-activated. Okay? Deep stance, too deep of a stance will put you in that state. So, now we did this. So this and this will give me pre-activated state. So when I take off, when I take off, okay? What's the difference if I don't have it on? Like that. Okay? This habit, sometimes you can't feel that you do. Okay? So if, even if your partner tells you, hey, you kind of adjust it foot before you go, you gotta say, no, I don't do it. I don't do it. I swear I don't do it. Okay? So at that time, maybe you need to be filmed so you can see yourself. Okay? Or another thing you do is, if the person is doing this before they go, just, just put your foot right here. And if they bump into your foot before they go, they know that they're doing something. You know what I'm talking about? Okay? There's all these little tricks you can use. But watch your partner's lead leg, and you want them, sorry, 
See how I'm going slow because this allows me to be educated how my muscle that you use and how I use my muscle. Okay? So it's like why is the knee coming in on the sun at, at that point? Uh, why does it happen? You know, there's, the pressure going th there's not like one answer that's going to explain for everybody. If you have a weak hip muscle, a piece, it's going to stabilize, stabilize the hips. So if I have this muscle a little weakened, it's going to naturally collapse when I go one legged. Okay. This is a one legged muscle. Yeah. Or if the ankle is weak, or if the foot flat, if you have a flat foot, when I lower the foot, the foot's going to flatten and going to throw my ankle in this angle like that. And that makes my ankle go uh, knee weak. So that, those are some of the reasons. It depends on the person. Right. But I would say half of the people that have this issue, a lot of it is just the hip control. So you might have to really get this hip to be strong. And you, you include this with the hamstring growing. So when you go right. like that, that comes up. See, so now it's going to go. You can YouTube all the champion contests, you know, world class contest people, because in the competition arena, uh, this is what all the judges want to see. Okay? It's, to them, it's very pretty. Low, deep, right? But once those people, when they step up, they go like that. Okay? You see that pre adjustment before they go. That's the way everybody does it. They just do it so fast that. They think it doesn't happen, okay? But you know what to look for? You see these kind of so-called biomechanical faults, okay? And being that they're in their twenties, their body will allow them to do those things. Okay? And but it's that abuse of the system. I mean, not that particularly, but other stuff. Deep senses. Okay, coaches, watch your watch your student. Avoid that or double stepping. Okay, watch for that. Okay, go ahead. Do the same step. Watch each other. Make sure you don't have that foot adjustment before you actually commence.
something like that. And if I make this leg go anymore, it moves the pelvis with it. It, it, it makes the pelvis go with it. The, the leg cannot go by itself beyond around 20 degrees. Most people are less than 20 degrees. Does that make sense? It's the way our hip, this, it's where, where the hip socket is that causes this. It, it's just human thing. It's not individual thing. It's, it's, we, we, we're designed this way. Okay? So if my leg, okay, like that, that's zero degree, that's it, okay? So this is 90 degrees, so this is 45. So what did I say, how many degrees? 20. About 20 or a little? Okay, so remember, this is 90 degrees, about half of that is 45 degrees. Half of 45 is 22.5. That's still too much, so 20, look at that, that's it. So it goes from here to here. That, that's about that's about it. Like that, like that. Hmm. That's all it is. But if I turn the pelvis, this leg will go back more, like 60 plus degrees. Because the way that the socket is designed, it bumps up, it can't go anymore, but it could go back this way. Does that make sense or not? Let's try with the person. Can you lay on your stomach? Yeah, just lay on your stomach. Okay, just relax, okay? Okay, so I'm going to raise this leg. Just look at this her hip and this leg bone, okay? So relax with it. See how the hip bone started already come with me? Like that? That's, that's off neutral. So right there, that's about 15 degrees so it's that's it. So if you go more than that, that the hip has to go back like that. 
and you could tighten your stand up to counteract and get a little bit more angle, but uh, you're not going to get much more. You're good. Thank you. Yeah? So how do you maintain connection when you do shield your Oh, okay. You want to do some kicking stuff, right? Okay. Uh. <laughs> okay, so that's if you go directly back. Okay? If you change the angle, then the leg goes back down. So if it's, it's the angle of this leg bone as relative to the hip socket that allows this leg to go back only 20 degrees or more like 60 degrees. So it's at that 60 degrees that you use your back kick. So you don't really do a back kick with your leg straight back. It's actually angled. Right? So it's like, with that definition, I can only back kick about this height with this hip tuck. But I actually turn so they can go up higher. So that's that back kick position and how many is, is the same. Except if I put this on the ground, I, I get the same hip angle. Okay. So from a anatomical perspective, okay, this this position with my hip in this angle, this is what your body likes. Okay? So I just firm up the muscles in this position, and I'm still here. But look at if I go more than this, like that, right? And I could I could do this to counteract. I go like that. So it looks like I'm straight. Looks like I'm straight. Right? It looks very nice, no? Like that. Okay, then if I stand up, this is the position I'm in. Okay? I want to be here. That's where I get my best mechanical advantage, this thing, right? Like that. So, this way, this way. Now, once it goes further, like that. Now it's time. I can go lower. Okay. See? As long as I can feel the edge on each foot, and my triangle could be activated, I could satisfy those. But the legs are always ready to go in usage. It's just not still that I'm standing on. So this is how many. Back stance, cold to that seat, okay? See that rear foot, the edge is like that? And I open my pelvis like this, like that, okay? It's, it's physically impossible for a human body to have this 90 degree orientation and be exactly sideways. Your hips would not allow you to do this, okay? Maybe one in a thousand, maybe, if you have this kind of hyper-flexible joints, but most of us can do it, okay? So, look at my pose. You can turn this way, look, like that. Just angle this way. My spine is still straight, hips, shoulders are together. It's not twisted, it's together. And that knee is pointing straight, and this is my back side. Uh, you also asked in your text, what's the purpose of the stance, right? What, what should I feel? What, 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 why? You know, what's this evident? What's the purpose of the stance? Okay. For whatever you're doing, there's a goal. Am I blocking? Am I striking? Am I kicking, punching? You have those goals. Or am I, am I just holding ground? Goals. Stance have to help you with that goal. Okay. It's not about looking a certain way so that you could win competition or pass your test. Okay. Okay, so I'm protecting my spinal columns nice and firm, right? Now I'm adjusting my hip, the carpet. Okay. It's like my legs are grabbing the floor. It's always grabbing and relating to the floor. It's a very active process. But if I go like that, this would be looking like some kind of a standard I have to, I have to satisfy. You know, like back stance, I have to have 70% 70, 70 of your weight here. That has to be 90 degrees. It's got to be like that, like this, and you got to be like this. You know, like this. Okay? OK? 
Okay. It's like I'm grabbing the foot versus like that. Function over form. Function over form, yeah. Function is I need to connect it. I need to keep stable over the floor, right? That's my goal so that I could deliver whatever it takes. Okay, so in that order, that we did showman already enough, so we could do hum. Mm -hmm. Okay, so pretty much, it's gonna be about the same width, which is your walking width. When you walk, your legs spread apart in a certain direction, natural width, so that's your width, and you just go like that hum. Yep, you want the knee to be straight, okay? That same over the second toe. Wherever the second toe is, that's, that's my knee flexion over the bottom foot. By the way, I, I'm like a researcher, okay? Like any any kind of research field, it's ongoing. So whatever I'm telling you is not a finite, is this is not like in all technical presentation. It's just, as I'm working through, as I'm discovering things, this is my best information for you right now. Next year I come back or whenever, it's gonna be somewhat different. It's not gonna be exactly like this because I'm constantly pushing this so that uh, better way to talk about it, better way to teach it, more insight about certain muscles and how we activate. So you get all this new stuff coming in. So it's not gonna change drastically, I hope. I'm not gonna say, you know, okay, this this is this really sucks. I'll go back to this, okay? I mean, it's not gonna change like that. <laughs> okay, so hum me. Try that. Hum me. Okay. Same thing, same kind of muscle activation. Front knee should be over the ball of the foot. Okay? Back edge, feel the back edge. Yes. And you can even feel the triangle. Activate the triangle between the knees and the bottom of your pelvis. Make a triangle. Then try your back stance, corkscrew back. Okay. Remember that the rear foot's pole will come in slightly so that you can activate the edge. Okay? Rear pole, knee will come on. So the length is determined by when you lose that seal? Yep. Back. Yep. Yep. You did hum me, right? So yeah. you could probably go just a little bit longer. Yeah. Then then you could have this uh, go back to that feeling that the spine line of the other mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. So so this means still right there. Sometimes this part of food though, where you actually do like a little block, so the guys don't catch it as junk food. Or if you try to enter your inside space, you have that's the block. So both need to be together. Together. Yes. That gives you the best leverage. If this is it today. If I have a scout so I can show you because uh, when you start picking up one when you come in. So. <laughs> Not the Halloween scout thing, but uh, oh, we have plenty of those. I can get yeah, you in yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> Are they somewhat like you? I don't know. Too wide, maybe too wide. They have lost joints. Too wide, trouble. But once you get here, it's going to be like, like that. You feel the muscles. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't feel like hunting and showman when you're kind of. You don't feel that same kind of forward. Mm. It's different. It's a different sense. So the whole, whole sensation is going to have a, like a little. Slightly different too. How many is you're gonna feel the cheeks pulling like that? Uh, it's more in line. Yeah. Is the yeah. A lot of times we get power out of rotating into her for example, you're stepping it up. Or you snap it back and pat it down. Okay. Let's try it. Let's try head on show down because that kata has these three stances. Okay? Uh, there's a thing called muscle memory, okay? And also muscle memory association. 
What that, that is is we just did these techniques, not during kata, but just by itself, right? So just because we did that, you can step now. Now if you do hair and shoulder that has the same step, that it's going to connect. Oftentimes, they won't connect. Okay? So let's say you have a muscle memory in your kata to go like that. That's what you're going to do. It's not associated. So you have to make those links. You have to connect them. OK, so let's try it. Am I pushing it too much? Is it too much information? Mm -hmm. No, that's okay. good. If I get too much, then the, the eyes glaze. And I know <laughs> it hurts. Then eyes glaze, then, then the yawn starts. You know? the nice people just yawn like that. The kids will just yawn like that. <laughs> <laughs> then I know. Information is not good for OK? So it has to be the right amount, right? It's a message, right amount. OK, hey. Hey, hey, Angela. Hey, yawn. Angela. Each. So, to your best of your ability with what you know now, get into your hand, right? You have to get the edges down, your hips are angled, your hips are angled, right? It's not flat. That's the difference between Hami and Shaman, is Hami is, right? Knee. Right. Okay, this is Shaman, so we did that. Go back to movement number one, please. Go back to movement number one. Okay. Remember when your partner was looking at your knee? Okay. You know that. You get that. Remember that. Okay. And your partner's looking at double stepping when you adjust the front foot. So, so recall all those lessons that you can apply now. Okay. All right. Knee. Okay. Sun. She hammer fist. Be careful of the position because you're going to have very in line. No double stepping, no knee collapse. Okay? Ball. Okay. Next one is going to be hand me, so try to visualize what that's going to be when you land it. Right. Lock. Okay. You have three stepping in hand three hand me stances. Okay? Remember when I was here last, we talked about active and passive? No. Yes. Somebody remember? Mm -hmm. No? Okay. Um, I'm going to speak an analogy, okay? So. Uh. <laughs> you getting tired of me picking on you? Let's say I represent my spine, okay? 
and C represents my length. Okay, so if, if me, the spine, I want the leg to go over here, and stay right there, stay right there. And I do that, and I do that. Is she being passive or active? Huh? Passive. Passive because I'm, I'm taking her there and bringing her right like that, right? When I do that, I feel the weight. I feel the resistance, right? You should just stand in there and I'm moving like this. OK, now you're going to help me, right? When I pull you that way, just jump there, you got it? Now we're going to go right. OK, is that active or passive? Active. Active. So when the limb, or when, when my leg is active, I work less. Does that make sense? Yes. So, thank you. That's awesome. The first step in the answer, the, the moving leg, in your case, is going to be your left leg. Active or passive? Passive. It's passive because I lean my body, and this leg keeps me from falling, so it just goes like that. He, he has to move, otherwise I'm going to fall. That's passive. Because this is active. My leg actually goes there. You can recruit the leg to actually go there rather than fall there. See the difference? So when you hear the driver is my driving leg, in this case right leg, you should thrust my body that way. But if this leg helps me by going by itself, I don't need to worry about the extra weight. So it's going to go with that. And you're going to gain speed. Not because you want to go fast, because you're being efficient. Okay? Result of efficiency is speed. <laughs> and you get here, and a lot of times, this is a pleasant surprise because you'll get there before you're ready. You're going, oh, wait, how did I get here? <laughs> and then, oh, I kind of like this. Okay? So learning to make body parts active makes the whole system a lot more efficient. Okay? Besides, it's not spine's responsibility to move my leg. Okay? In fact, your, your spine hates that job. It's a lazy leg. Like it's so, it's so heavy, so I gotta carry you over there every time. Okay? If you could just be more active, I don't have to work as hard. That's what your spine's talking about. Okay? So that's the analogy. Okay? okay, let's try it. Okay? Let's try it. You have to overcome some habit. You're gonna feel your body, your body would naturally be passive. Okay. Okay, ready? We're going to stick with the first kata because that's easy for me to teach this, these yeah. ideas, okay? All right. You can't just lean and fall now. You have to load your right leg and move the body. Your left leg will go ahead of, ahead of the body. Okay, ready? All right. Each. Good. Right up. Now go that way. And you're going to just reverse it. I need. Okay, up. Sun. Good. One more time. Ready? She. All right, good. Let's move on. Okay, ready? Now we're going to do the cut. I. Itch. Quick. Okay, good. Knee. Good. Okay. Sun. Okay, that was kind of dull, right? So that, that's what happens when you get efficient. You're going to go quick, quick. Then third move is like, like that. So something's not quite, something's not quite right yet. So that's because we haven't talked about the turning mechanics. <laughs> you go, oh my god, this guy's just nuts. Okay. It's, a, it's always uh, hard. Uh, it's hard. to move forward, but we never step backwards. Okay. So the third move is actually a turning mechanic rather than a stepping. You don't think of it as a step action. It's actually a turning. Okay? Okay, so we're going to have to alive in a few things. Uh, first of all, I want you to stand like this, okay? So think, I want you to think you have a spine, right? Spinal column. Then hips and shoulders like that. And they make a rectangle. You get me? Okay, they're going to move as a rectangle. You're going to keep them as a unit, 
and you're gonna go 180 like that. Then go back the other way and back to 180. Okay, so remember, this is not a jumping turn, but just turn your spine. Okay, go like this. You got, you don't, let's see. You're gonna go to your left, okay? So your left shoulder, left shoulder, left hip. We're gonna, we're gonna spin that direction. Okay? So right shoulder, hip. We're going opposite. And from top bird's eye view, it's gonna be a rotation like that. So shoulder, hip, one direction. Shoulder, hip, other direction. It's gonna be complementary motion. And the spine's in the middle like a like those revolving door. Okay, so ready? Spin. There you go. And go back. Go. Reverse it. Yes. Go. Go. Okay, with, your, with your mind's eye, already, already start moving there. Let your mental image move there, then trigger the button. So you, you move there first, then trigger the button. Ready? Go. Just start moving your body there, go. Okay, so right here, right here. The so right leg's in front, movement number two in front. Movement number two, right leg in front. Right leg in front. There you go. Okay. Uh, me, yes. Okay, now, when you spin, you have to spin on the ball of the foot. So for, for now, raise the heel so that you feel the pressure of the ball of your left foot. You're going to turn on that, okay? You ready? Apply the same muscle that we just worked on. Ready? Go. Yeah. Did you get there before you're ready? Okay, let's try it again. Let's try it again. Do not turn on your left foot being flat, okay? It has to, it has to be on the ball. And otherwise, you'll twist that knee. Okay, ready? Go. Okay, so you're so fast that you're there before you're done, okay? Right? One more time. So what will help you is mentally you visualize this whole thing and visualize a good plan. Good landing. Okay, ready, set, go. Alright, good. Okay, now let's see how it looks. From the beginning. Don't forget. It's easy to forget. Your body is very, you know. It takes a while, but your mind will figure it out way before your body. So be patient with your body. Alright. You can shoot the left leg that way, right? Ready? Hitch. There you go. Then now, and you know now how to step into showman. So you got this image of the finish. Ready? Knee. Now you can spin the spine. Sa. Oh, you cut this so fast. Then. Okay, hammer fist. Chi. You can step. Go. Okay. To the left. Go. Good. All right. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. First six movements, much improved. <laughs> uh, early 1900, late 18, early 1900, uh, Okinawan, I want to say local government, decided to teach karate to, to children, like school age kids. Okay? And they asked few of the local masters to come up with a curriculum. Okay? And one thing that had to happen was take out all the mean stuff. Like an actual combat techniques. Because uh, from that perspective, karate is very vital. Okay? And to teach kids physical education system, you gotta make it very, very benign. So a lot of that Detailed techniques all boil down to just make a fist. Okay? Or open it. Or close it, like that. So, okay, what does this mean? Uh, uh, you know, it's a block. Well, how can we put this in here? Oh, it looks nice, just block like that. <laughs> okay? okay? If you do I get it, you'll get it like that. Okay? If somebody punches you, you do I get it. Okay? So, that's how it was brought down to the education system. In fact, that mentality went to mainland Japan. When Master Funakoshi went to Japan and spread karate, this was the form of karate that went there. Okay? There's a long discussion of why and 
Was it good or was it bad? No, no. But that's what happened. Here. Thank you. Okay. In the original format, th there's no blocks. Okay. okay. And karate techniques was not just strikes. So we have kids here, so I'm not gonna go into detail about what it is, okay? Okay. So so I thought I'd bring it up from movement number six to nine. Okay? Okay, let's try that. I'll try it a nice way, okay? Not so bad. All right. I want to. You have to buy that card? I want it. I want it. All right. So left hand goes towards your eye. Okay? And it's not like this. It's a relaxed finger. It's going to hover from the bottom drop. Bottom drop. Like that. Okay? Like any, have you ever had like a gnat fly in your eye or fly around you? And it's moving around, okay? And your eyes are super sensitive, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like tons of gnats are going into your eye. You can somehow avoid that, right? So your eyes are designed, you have, we have developed to really protect our eyes. Our blink reflex is quite uh, amazing. Okay, so if you go like that this summer, likely you catching someone's eye is very good. Okay? So it floats up from the bottom. Okay? And the little thing, if you go like that, person will flinch. So you have to train yourself so that the eye attack looks like this. So when you do the kata, this part has to be like that, where it's very nonchalant. It's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, especially from comp competitive careers you have, would you ever think, you know, strike, we always go full blast, but can you go with that? Because okay. you would think it wouldn't work. Okay? But I tell you, in the heat of the sparring, you sparring with someone really hard, and you go like, and you go like that and just touch your shoulder, you would like to touch your shoulder. And he's going to wonder why did he just touch my shoulder? <laughs> <laughs> because it's not threatening, it just floats up, and somehow the psyche will allow that. Okay? Especially for like ladies' self protection, so keep this kind of thing in mind. Okay? When you have this ferocity that that person reacts to, like you just go like that. But it takes a lot of discipline and training to be that calm under that much pressure just to go like that. Okay? It flows from the bottom down. Okay? There's more detail, maybe I'll play later. But <laughs> okay. okay. So once it happens, you're going to step in, you have an option, you could punch, it's a hook punch, like this, okay. or it's a, it's a throat graze, you graze the form into the, the trade okay. You see that? And suddenly it's not a block, because why are you stepping to block? No. You are asserting, you see it opening, and you're attacking. So that's the main time. Okay? Yes. From a long perspective, hey, you're in a battle, you so happen to be empty handed. I lost my weapons, or I don't have a weapon, you know, I have to face you. Okay? I gotta make sure it ends with me alive. That's the right idea. Alright, so, stop and part. That's the first movement number seven. Okay? And I'll stop. With that, add the correct angles and let's see what that's like. There's not a lot of things to think about. I know. I, I just kind of divert you so you get the richness of how much our in kind of, and kata has so much stuff in it. But it's unbelievable. Okay? All right. Ready? Sheesh. All right. Good. The next one is we don't straighten. Okay? The, the, the arm is already there. So you have a raking technique. Okay, so rake it across the face. Yep. So you hold it as you rake across. This one will come right behind it. Okay. Hutch. You see that? Good. Now, just with any kind of mechanics, if the corners of your body turn together around the axis of your spine, you get a 
Make sure both sides are active. You're gonna get a very powerful and quick motion. Okay? Good. Okay. okay, you got it? Suddenly, your kata looks different when you're putting these visuals, okay? Especially for you guys here. Okay. Guess what? We have another turning mechanics right here. You got it? So, on the bottom of your foot, we don't, we don't pivot on a fixed foot. By the way, turning on a fixed foot is how you rupture your ACL, okay? Right? The soccer player get their foot stuck, their feet stuck on the grass, and they get hit or something, they turn on it, and that's like... Should we rotate on the ball instead of this ball? If you have to gain on the ball on the foot, it makes it easier. If it's too compact, you're going to have to go to the field. So you don't Okay, now, let's do this one medium speed. Okay? Okay, ready? Right Each. Okay, let's try that again. Try to have a singularity of motion so it's going to go one flow. It's not, it's not turning down, but it's just a one flow. Okay? Ready? Go. Good. Try it again. Try it again. So it began to isolate which area that you need to activate. Anything that's passive, you got to wait that area up. Just kind of get them into the active system, okay? Two. Good. Let's go again. Let's go again. Go. Okay. Let me give you one more secret. Okay, let's try it again. Okay. There's one part that's staying passive. Your motion. This is one area that's very obviously passive. Swing so, on the leg. Huh? Uh, no. Come on. Anybody? Yes, it's front leg. Okay. Okay. So, let me stand in the middle so you can see. As I turn my hips, your legs is just coming with me. Hmm. See my leg? As I turn the corners, this leg is just coming with me. You get it? It's passive. It's passive. It's fine being passive. I'm just saying, if you want a little bit more speed, turn it on. Okay? And that's this. Like that. The muscles. I'm actually turning this this leg inward as I climb in with the top like that. Okay? If you do that, you're going to get an extra, like a turbo charge. You might actually fly off and not land. So, so hold on. <laughs> Just be careful. Just play with that. Go ahead, try it. Okay. 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 Go ahead. 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 Okay, good stuff, you guys did this? 
Number two to three, that transition could be sped up with that, just with the same thing. That the rear knee spinning inward. Yes, yes. Okay. Now, once the spinning, now the moving leg also have to come up to speed and move with it. There you go. There you go. So fast. Okay. So if you can think of this left leg swinging. Uh, just ask me about it. This thing is swinging in, right? Like that. This action is not like a swing of a bat. Okay? This leg is swinging or like, a, like hitting of a rack. Okay? Right? Okay. Bat doesn't like to swing by itself. You want to hit something. Right? So, what is that bat going to hit? Yes. No? What's it going to hit? Yes. If you were say it needs to hit a ball, where is that ball that, that's going to hit? Here. Huh? That's, that's the ball. Yes. So, ah, there you go. Got it? So, if that best swing, he has to have the ball in front of it so that you can hit that ball. Yes. There you go, right there. Should you pick it up that much? Or? No, it's, it's fine for now. If you got it now. Okay. Like, look at that way, for example. Alright, like you're fighting. Okay, so, when you swing this beat in and, and you hit this ball, what, what kick is that? Turn that knee up in, into the little in, in, in. Yeah, turn it in. Ah! Yes. Now do it. No, 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 no. So you get it one swing. So you gotta put the ball in front of, in front of it. Boom! There you go. There you go. Like that. See that? If you, get, if you learn how to put the ball in play, you can have a singularity of motion. And that back here is gonna go. Boom! Like that. It doesn't wind up, it just goes out. There, there. So now you're going to add the rest, like shoulder, all has to now come to life. Okay, so that's how the application is with it. The, the, the act, activating part, especially in the rotation, has all these benefits. So, how that applied, it came from the movement three, but then it associated with this, and then it's if, if, if this turns and I put this in play, that's the back end. So I just swing this in. What's like the difference? That one, see, it has a double step. If I go, that, that has a double step. It accused it right So this one, it goes like that. Okay. Once you get used to this, it comes so fast that. that Best you can do is maybe block it or just jam it, but, but not able to counter or to pick that in. It, it just starts too fast. The eye sees it way where the foot's almost about right there. Mm -hmm. Take it fast while you use the other one then to change up. Yep. And you can also go here as a sidekick, so the, the start looks the same. Right. Can't tell if it's going to be a lead leg sidekick or back. Mm -hmm. Then you put a little delay on it or sometimes a little fake, it just makes it even worse. Okay, all that, see how the, once you establish something like this, how it, it ties into other things? So. Okay, <coughs> let's try it again. There's a review, because everything's hanging, got to put it all together. So the point of that was to, to, to let you know that sometimes you think you got it, you have this all active, but then you get to look through, you realize there's all these parts that are still passive. 
Alright, it's the fun dirt. Let's start from the beginning. We're going to do the copy now. Remember, first move, the right leg will drive, left foot will move. Okay, here we go. Ready? Hitch. Do your best to find that harmony position. What is the best harmony position? Pre activate the hamstring, okay? Knee. And here's the new toy right here. Use that knee toy. Your left knee goes into the center. Ready? Sam. There you go. And hammer fish. G. Ready then? You're in a humming position, so adjust yourself so that you get the best. The grabbing techniques, you launch yourself. Oh. This one I haven't talked about, but you can figure it out. Which is your active part, and how you're going to shoot that ahead of you, okay? And the driving side, on the other side, All right, shoot. Okay. Nonchalant, okay, this one. Nonchalant, nonchalant. And whack that person from the side, ready? All right, shoot. Now it's just open hand break. Hot. Good. This is your 
standard. Fingers together, pack it down. Your, your wrist in line with the forearm, right? You can the blade. Stand. Okay. Stand. Hey. And you stand and you stand. Just this is where we keep on level. Now, I want you to relax your fingers like this. Okay? And, and take your other hand just to feel the difference. Okay? Is there a difference if you hit this way or if you hit it like that with the next Can you feel the difference? Okay. I'm not pointing out what is right or wrong. No, no. All I said was now you have two weapons, two tools, two weapons. I want the fingers open. Okay. okay, so what if we start out like this? At the moment you hit, it becomes like that. Try that. Not the opposite. Start this way. When you hit, it's going to go like that. Also good. <laughs> okay, now no, I'll let this. Your hips of your finger. Remember? If you're gonna use that as a you know type of strike or something above your above your nose, okay, kiss your nose, so I can't say. You wouldn't go like that, huh? That can would look like this. But with no energy, it's going to be like this. Just the way you use it. Yeah. Okay? What if you made a knife hand like that? What do you think that is? The best one is. Throw the strike. <laughs> use your measurements. <laughs> not, not even the okay, so strong tap tap tap. Open tap tap. Okay? Strong to open. Open to strong. Take okay, a test. Down. Okay? Hit hmm. with that leg here. I want you to take this to that edge of the sword. And you're going to cut it. Cut it. So where would you hit that one? Where, where would this be useful? Okay. Okay, another one. All the way down here. This way. This way. Okay, next one. Dig it in. Dig it in. Dig it in. Okay. What are just some of the usage of that? It's like a Swiss army now. With all those things. Sometimes it's done this way, before the elbows. Sometimes it's done this way. Okay? Sometimes it's done this way. That's a stop. Right? Okay. So if you write all that down, it's quite a list of it. Okay. So let's go back to the punch position right here. The four knife hand. Each. E. Sam. She. Okay, there you go. That's your hair and shoulder. Okay? We're using the principles of biomechanics to kind of explore this kind of but uh, you get that idea. Okay? Any questions before? I think we're going to have another session after this. Take a short break, right? So we bow out or? Uh, it's informal, maybe. It's quick. Maybe we could start like this again with the bowing instead of a uh, citizen. Yeah? Okay. Okay. So we just bow. Okay, that's a good session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we can go 8.30 if you want to get dinner. Time. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Yeah. Yeah. You'll figure them out so quickly. How did you know their name? I've been asking that. I've been trying it for eight years. What's your name? Sasha. Sasha. Okay. So we have Tanya, 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 and Sasha. Here the father. Four dollars? Four dollars. 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 Four dollars.
turned so fast. Let's review really quickly the mind reading. So, so like that. So we have the kicking leg with the shin bone or in the thigh bone in this angle at the end. Try not to drop your knee after the kick like so. After that review is you're spraying the hip, base hip. Compress, compress, release. Compress, release. So that's your mind reading. Okay, just review. Go ahead. Bring the heel back like that. Close the knee joint. Yes.
Okay, good. So from here, regular come on. Okay? The pressure's on the balls of your feet. And you come on like this. Okay. This, this one type of come on, okay? Where you want to be very mobile. Like that. So that the energy's on the balls of your feet. Then same thing. You're lying at it. Use the spring, release. So that's your mind. Okay, go ahead and try that. Be easy on your knee joint. Smooth, kick and squeeze back. forward, that the imaginary ball, you will squeeze towards your belt knot, okay? Expand from the belt knot, back up, and squeeze. Just establish this, establish this energy movement. Compress, expand, compress, expand, keep going, okay? Elbow, arm around the ball, squeeze into the center, and expand from the center. Into the center, Okay, same thing now. Back to come on like this. You want to feel this flow in, in yourself. Okay? And then I do the same way. Okay? You don't have to go fast, just go comfortable pace. My idea. Okay? Smooth. Stay on the balls of your feet so that your spine is connected always. Okay? Always connected. your partner. All right. All right. Left leg forward in this position. Okay. All right. So you're just going to use each other as targets to do my giddy. Uh, there's no blocking. Don't block. Just, and at the same time, Try not to move with the arms open. Just hold your regular guard, okay? And when your partner kicks you, pulls you, just move with it. Move with it. Right? Back side, front kick, I like eat. Find it, bump. Okay, then come back, okay? And the front side, you're trying to mind it. Doesn't matter which leg, just front kick. Okay. Go ahead. Just go back and forth, and mind it. Do one kick at a time. Like you do one kick, your partner does one kick, okay? Try to think about the details you worked on. Singularity of motion, like we've been talking all night. Okay, very efficient, effective techniques. So, again, on the ball of your front foot, you're going to turn the knee out like that. Can you, can you swing this knee open like that? So that's your sensation of your mawashi, right? Okay, like that. 
Okay? Just get this sort of warmed up. Okay? You don't want to go deep stairs because I'm kind of stuck here, so right, right here. Okay? You got it? Try to, try to move the front foot and move like that. Okay, good. Now, really pay attention to the movement of the heel right here. Just know what, how that heel is moving like that. Here. Mm -hmm. Yep. This hand. So hand this hand. would be function, yep. I'm there. Okay. If you can, yes. If you can look at Lily's front foot. Okay? So like I said, the ball of the foot is pinned and then move the heel. And I say pay particular attention to the heel because energy that shoots from the heel. That's your kick. That's the energy. So the real foot will match that energy. So as the heel moves, that kicking foot, it's like this heel moves that foot. Okay. So when you turn the heel, you draw the kick like that. Okay. So when the heel spins around the ball, and when the heel plants, that's the impact of the kick. Does that make sense? So as, it, as the ball of the foot pivots and the heel is moving like that, and it's going to go pull. And at that moment, hit, hit, hit. So that's how you time the hit of the kick. You got to try it. Okay. Yeah, you got to just try to get it. See, he just looks effortless now. Okay. And the squeeze back is connected to the whole thing. So she's not kicking and holding the leg up. The whole thing is like boom. It just like comes right back. Yep. That was the good one. That was, good. That was a singular motion like that. Okay? There you go. What about after the kick and she pivots and then got a pivot back or just leave it there? I would, I would not, no. But uh, like you don't need to come back. Okay? Yes, yes. Okay, then if you do a follow-up technique, like a punch, then, then after you land, it's going to come right up because you're going to punch. <coughs> yes, like that. So one and two. Yes. What I would do is after the kick, just kick and stop. Hold that, hold that, hold that, hold that. Yes, now rotate your, <laughs> rotate your hip now and punch. Okay, so now, we talk about active. You have to actively rotate the leg Boom. like that. So take control of the leg and make this knee go in and the heel will come up like that and put pressure on the ball. Mm -hmm. So after the kick, you're like this. Right? You're like this, after the kick. Then, then this foot's going to go Boom. like that. Well, see, and, and note the action of the hip when she does it. Okay? Maybe if you could face that way and kick. Same leg. Uh, no, the left leg. Yes, yes, yes. Hold it, hold it right there. Hold it. Hold it, hold it. No, 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 no. You gotta hold it. Hold it. Yes, feel the firmness in the spine. Now, if you overactivate this side, see, you can't hold your balance. So it needs to be more like that, like, 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 like that. Uh, it's not balancing like that, but more like this. So you kind of compress the spine. There you go, there you go. Now, just swing this knee down. And, and can you see the spine? It stays as a unit. Okay? If you try to force the heel down during that action, you're going to actually turn at the waist to finish the punch. Or you're going to thrust that leg like that, and you're going to kind of lock the hip out. You can hit this way, just saying, but it's not very uh, friendly to the spinal column. Okay. One more time. 
all dead. See how you, you compress in this area? The whole thing have to compress like that and not, not bend. There you go. And okay, one more thing, one more thing you're missing, okay? Try it again. Okay, wait, so in here, if I push my weight a little bit over here, I start to fall, right? Yes. And I could use that to rotate. But that's passive we talked about. So when you hear it, I'm gonna take my hips, shoulder, and then rotate like that. Yes. The whole thing is active. I follow that. Squeeze the back side more. Yeah, yeah. Then whole thing, twist the whole thing. Bam! Like that, okay? So this will hit harder because you're staying as a unit. And you're not leaning, falling, turning. Okay, so you act, you actively do this. Now if you connect this to kata, can you keep the knee up? Like that. Like this. Like this. Yeah. Okay, are you on that? Yes. Do this good elbow strike. That's where mm -hmm. similar thing. Yeah. I would make the stance shorter. Yes. And then go up again. See I try to balance like that? Yes. You're gonna Compress your spine in a straight line. Yes, yes. This way. Now, the energy of your body, make it go through this base leg. If, if this were hollow, for example, push your breath energy through that hollow entity right here to straight your goal. Okay, good. What I'm saying is, in here, I'm going push my energy back into this leg. Like That, that's one type of energy production, okay? So for Hena Yonda, it's a good training tool to figure that out. Then you're gonna say, well, what's it for? When do I need this kind of, you know, like, like I get, I, I'm going out and back in the same leg. What, what's the purpose of that, right? So you gotta, it makes you ask questions about uses of that, okay? But it's very good energy training per se, I could tell you that, so when you do that, Okay, so as you rotate the whole spinal column, push into your back leg. No, nope, you're doing this. You, you're going like that, so now you're on the I was telling you, like a screwing down, you're going to go like that and push into that leg. Push your whole spinal energy into that leg. That's better. That's the idea. You, you yes. haven't, you're not there yet, but you got that. Okay, try it again. Once, once you get it, it's going to go like that. It feels like that. See that? Yes. When things go like that, you can't, it's like you get addicted to that. Yes. And when you go like that, like that, like that, like that, like that, and you, you don't like it till it goes. The shoulder stance are really good. Like it's solid. solid. Can't deny it when it's like that. It's solid. Now, when she was going down, dropping too far down, it was. Yep, deep it's going too much that. She's down and moving. Okay, so, so you just did the roundhouse kick with this left leg. And you're going to go into reverse punch, same thing. And this one is different, you're going to go like that. Yeah, you're actually going to go to the front leg. There you go. And we really use this really kind of, that knee turn there. Nope, you fell and turned. You don't want to fall and rotate. Like this leg is going to rotate the hip. This leg, this leg will rotate the hip. Best kata. This one is roundhouse kick. You just do the roundhouse kick. Anyway, you got that. Okay. Okay, we're gonna go back to roundhouse kick. Okay, let's try it by yourself first. Okay. How do you turn that front foot? Use the heel to create the roundhouse kick. Okay. You can turn with the kick. Turn with the kick.
just get it put here, right here. So that way we can have this.
the back kick. Or side kick, if you want to Back kick. have most questions. Okay, so we show you. It's the up. You went out. Now you go in. Okay, now you go in. So this is your fat swing time, right here. You gotta get this ball in play to be here. I have to get this ball early, early, so when this bat swings around, the kick is out. Okay? So when this knee goes in, the kick is out. It's not this. Too late, isn't it? I'll try it all. We're going to go left foot. When the knee's finished, finished, look where this foot is. Like that. It's kind of Okay? Now you can connect the spine, but when this knee goes in, it's already out there. Okay? He goes up. So that's the timing from the back. It's opposite to the, sort of opposite to the round. You see okay. both legs are active at the same time? Yes, that yes, one? yes. And you pivot on the bottom of the foot. Okay, for advanced guys, breathe through the whole sequence, get it through. Okay, try it, then uh, I'll come around if you need help. Okay, if you're too high, this is really hard. So, this is a regular fight stance, so you, you draw your muscles. Active and you must be on the balls of your feet like this. That way you're very mobile, very mobile. Okay. So one more thing is when you rotate, you end about around 180 ish degree, it's gonna pivot and land. Okay. And wherever the heel land is the direction of my contact. Okay. So if I over rotate like that, the kick's going to go way out like that to the side. And if you're under right face, it's going to miss. So try to get the heel to land in the right spot. Yes. And, and your eye is going to get a slight visual before the heel hits. So you're saying you want the heel to hit? Okay. the baseball. And keep the head up so that you turn with this versus this. Yeah, you need a little bit of back extension on that kick. Yes, like that. Okay. There you go. Okay. Yeah, you, you don't want to keep turning. So you got to stop at the straight line. That's the key. Is just focusing on the foot. Not so much focus on the kick. Yes, work on the weak link right now. Yes, that's that, that's that. Just think about the plan right there, right there. See? If you get that, that kick is right behind you. It's going to be like a mule's kick. Oh, so much higher. Okay? And if it's anywhere in range, you're going to break something. Even if it's like you're going to break it down. Okay, so move around, move around. Just, just with your own opponent. Okay, just move around like this. Try the front kick high each. Boom. And keep moving. Doesn't matter which leg. Round house kick. Go. Keep moving. Back kick. Push it on again. Okay. Okay. Try it again. It doesn't have to be in that order, but just review those three kicks. Okay. Just kind of let it flow out. 
Try not to let the breath compress in your chest. Let it flow out towards your target. Okay? Wide your arms wide. Keep it, keep it control. Yes. 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 Degree of angular angular difference is very little. Okay? Most people think this is a psychic. Okay? You can do that. You could do a psychic this way. But from mechanical perspective, there's lots of usage of this side muscle. Okay, side hip muscle. This muscle here is actually a stabilizing muscle where if your body likes to use this muscle mostly to mostly to stabilize your one leggedness. What I mean by that is, when I stand one leg, the, the side muscle contracts to keep me upright. Okay? Let's say if I take the nerve and cut the nerve that controls this, and if I raise my leg, this happens. I'll fall. Okay? Because, because it can't keep this contraction, so it's going to lose it. So, people, with, there's a condition where this muscle acts, a, actually gets... Okay? So that means they don't have it. So they can go one-legged. So every time they go one-legged, they have to, they, they go this way, like this. Okay? So this muscle is really is useful for this. Okay? So it's not ready to do this. Okay. So, so what's the alternative? So back kick uses the glutes like that, right? The side kick, as just a little bit of the, the stabilizers, just a little bit. But it's pretty much, it's dominated by the glutes, okay? Glutes, hamstring, and your quads. So, I don't know if you can see my, yes, right there. So bend that support knee and, and push into me, right there. Now. Okay, like that, like that. So it's just psychic. Okay. So you might want to come like right behind you, right here. Since it base like her knee should be out over the same spot when she's in her front stance, kind of thing. Uh, some people, that's ideal, but some people want to have the flexibility. Right. But she's recruiting her glute inside the muscle. Can you see that? But if she goes to back kick, it's going to be mostly glutes. Nice. But it's still it's the ratio, because still this is involved. But a lot of the back muscle changes, the recruitment for the back. The side is going, to, it's going to rotate a little bit like that. But okay, anyway, it's right here, isn't it? That's where it comes from. You got it? OK, now we're going to backtrack. Right before the kick is delivered, right there. Right there. So it's at this junction that she can recruit the glutes to kick like that. Okay? But oftentimes people think this should be here. Like that. Right? So now as she kicks, you rotate and that comes in too late. It comes in too late. So what happens is what you want to do is not this now. 
that. Okay. Actually, that's not the way. That's not the way. <laughs> <laughs> So once I'm in proper angle, I can recruit these. Then you say, well, that looks like a two steps. I introduce it to two step, but in function, you gotta wean yourself and go to the one flow. So I got a forward projection. I'll just note my pelvic. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this. Oh, but that, that knee and hip is turning on the step in. This knee, this hip, is turning away on the step in. Like that. Okay. And before I stop, before I stop, the kick is gone. Okay? Before I stop, like that. That's how I look. Okay? So, if you stay there, you're going to it's not this. Remember? It's going to go like that. It's going to go pull. Okay? It's going to go pull. Then look, look, pull. The, the, the side and back kick has the same appearance. And I also add this. So those three kicks are, are taken off like this at you. The kick doesn't go. Like that, this goes like that, and that gives you less time to do a reactor. Mm -hmm. That's why if you can figure this out, especially the side kick, this angle, I'm not a crazy about because, but I kind of like this one, if I'm in the, this one, you gotta go here, and ride up this line, like that. Okay? My favorite way to use side kick is actually not that. I, I like to use it as a defensive gesture. So if we're like this, Sometimes he may wind up for big reverse box. Okay, reverse box. Okay. Yeah. Oh, like that. I stopped his whole momentum. Mm -hmm. Some guys, Sasuke's love to come in like that and do a really hard reverse box. And, and yeah, like that. So I see it coming. Oh, I catch it right on the thigh right there. So his rotation runs into my heel. Okay. Of course, you want to go higher, same thing right there. Okay. If you're coming from my man, you're kind of doing a step up from the shoulder. You're going to run into it. So, since it's a sidekick, or is it kind of, you know, it's a hybrid back kick sidekick? It's a sidekick. Like, I think that's the only thing that exists. That's sidekick. Okay. Okay. And sidekick, this way, is like a cousin or, or serving to a back. They're very close because the, the, the angle, this would be the sidekick and this would be more back. Like that. So when you're here and you bring it up like that, it's a side. It's a yep. Side and it's more rotating. rotating. It's kind of like if, if I have a, a rubber core attached to him in my sacrum, like that, right? It's kind of, as I back up and turn, I still feel that. So once I go with it, it's going to make me go like that. So once I go in, I just release the kick. And this one often, in function, you don't really coil release. It's going to kind of go like that. Right. It goes from where it's at into straight up like that. Yes. So it has this projection. Yes. Makes it hard for him to grab it or block it. It feels like you're coming with the back kick and then you change your mind. And like, yeah. That's right. That's what it can be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you hear like this, well, it see this now very popular in MMA. They, they call it side lead kick or or uh, oblique kick or something where they kick the knee joint. So it's very dangerous kick. That's right. Mm. Wow. Okay, thank you. So wait, you got the side kick now? Okay, we're gonna finish with the side kick. That's that's when you do it by yourself. If it busts my target, you gotta pivot. So rely on this knee turning like that. Okay? Turn it away from you and expose this muscle. So if you use this, this. At the beginning, you gotta kinda go in steps, okay? So you gotta pivot, then kick. Okay? Pivot, then kick. Earlier than that, yes. Make sure it's already rotated before you do. 
before the kick comes out of your body, it's already in this position. Then, then you release it. Yes. No, really, really, really. speed or one quarter speed and just kind of go back and forth. Just kind of go back and forth. Okay? Yeah, yeah. 
goodbye to you when you talk about it. If you had to teach something, then. Well, how are you stepping with that leg? Like, what's happening with that leg? Like, when you step? Like, like which direction is it looking? Backwards? Are you going to have to slowly or quickly? Okay, can you show me? Okay, okay, okay. And how about if I go uh, here? Is that done? Yeah. This one, right? What, you, what part of your foot is kicking the cut? Yeah. Heel. It's going to go like that. Can I ask you a question or not? Okay. You got it. <laughs> Good question. Good. Anything else? Um, right, like, um, face level kicks, what do you usually do to like, neutralize those? Face level kicks? Like, Face level kick, just an easy way to cut them off, just hands come up and step in. Kind of Face level, yeah. Yeah, someone's real prone to kind of... First and foremost is distant play. Mm -hmm. any, any technique, kick or punch, has to be in the right distance. So head kickers, they have to cover a lot of distance. But usually good ones are able to mask a lot of the prep work mm -hmm. so that it's there before you're ready to receive it. So, so it's, it's tough. You know, good head kickers are hard to deal with. You know? And this thing work is what would be my advice. It's like understand the distance, right? So I want to be either a little too far for that kick to hit me, or I'm too close for him to throw the kick, or I'm too angled off. Okay, so those three things, right? Then I also need to threaten him with my steps so that he's not just thinking, oh, how do I set up for hip kick? Whereas you make him worry, like, I could punch in the face, or I have a good kick too. So suddenly, his mind is not calm to set up for, for hip kick. So, so this didn't work, and also uh, be very smart with your distance, and also with your strategy. Okay. So, how do you do yeah, this? you need mechanical position to block the kick too. You know what I mean? So, so you know, these things against roundhouse kick or spinning hook kicks, those are really tough to deal with when they're really good at it. Mm -hmm. But once you know how to recognize it and play the distance, you can pretty much stay it out. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you, so how, do you, how do you identify that? How do you, I mean, somebody like Sasha, we all know, we've seen him so many times. He's great at kicking the head. I mean, mm -hmm. kept the right forehead. And how do you... Like well, that's why, that's why you need to have regular spine experience yeah. so that you don't get rusty yeah, spine. Yes. You know, you could be really good at it one time, but if you stop sparring for a while, yes. I'm talking about months or years, yeah. and you get out of shape, rusty. Then you can see with the eye, but still be kicked. That's the worst feeling. It's yeah. like you, you see it, and you know it's going to be it, and you yes. still get hit with it. Yes. Because then you're out of shape. Yes. You know? So uh, you do need regular sparring. And also, just Reasoning in your head, like you know, what do I do about head kicks? Yeah. You know, what do I do about it? Just knowing it's not you're gonna have to actually physically know what to do about it. Right. And and part of that learning experience is if you have good training partners who's not really trying to take your head off, but he might just touch your head and say, Hey, yeah, you open to that. So that allows you to <laughs> that's the difference between having training opponents versus training partners. If you have training partners you don't give it away at the same time you're working to help each other. That's so, that's you know, if my partner's head is open, I don't need to take it off. If I could just do a setup and touch you. I do a run kick, touch your head, hey, it's open. I'm just telling you it's open. You know, and I, I held back and just touch it, so you know. Can we work on that? The next guy might not be so nice. So. Can we work with a little on that tomorrow? Yeah. Just on free sparring, some training, just some. Like sure, like sparring, you know, like helping each other or things that are. Oftentimes, that's the problem. Is people can't discern between training partner versus training partner. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm not saying. I mean, once in a while, you know. But to me, if you have hundred sparring session, one could be with a little bit amped up. Yeah. Just so you know. But if you don't want to horse break the sparring because then then you're not even in the fighting world anymore. Right. You're just kind of messing around. Okay. 
we try to keep it, I mean, other guys always try to keep it light, you know, because I think that me, I learn more when we're kind of just going slow, and yep. it seems like I can pick up more than when we're, ah, we got to get in there, and, you know, it just, and part of it is knowing how to stay calm yes. under pressure, yes. and uh, it's easy to amp up, it's very easy to amp up, right. especially for guys, you know. Catch one, so I didn't catch you back. And that starts the whole second. Yeah, yeah. it's too late. Then you guys gotta fight. Then you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you do that once in a while, you know that the switch is still alive. You don't need to be flipping that like every time you fight. Okay. Okay. So, the uh, taking the steps and changing the kicks from front to front has to side and back seems very easy. How do we apply that to the number? No movement kicks. The, well, like when you have those in cut, for example, kicks and cut. Uh, it's the same thing, really. Uh, if you don't have the freedom to move, you let the kick. You do it like this, for example, or in the cut. Uh, it's still the same thing. But the movement that you have here, you get ready for like free spawn type of kick. You have to learn to feel that movement inside you. When you're not moving. Because ultimately, even spine, very good fighters, they don't move much. They're not always like this. They're kind of like this. Because they, they economize the movement, and the movements are happening internally, so that they set up for their techniques internally. And kata is a great place, because kata puts you in a very difficult position to get applied very efficient movement from awkward positions. So, kata and basics are really great places to learn those things. What I'm trying to say is they're really the same thing. Except, free spine kicks, you, you give it a lot of freedom to, to do those things. So, the time for kata. Say like the whole kata, this whole kata sucks, can help with the whole kata. Uh, do you have any particular parts? No. Gadger? Like where? Like, you have a cubic dash in your kata? Yeah. Like what kata do you do? Uh, jute. Jute. Oh, yeah, you have a bunch of those. Okay, so let's see. So, so I have like a main question. How do I generate, like, how would the best stance for cubic to generate power? First of all, okay, that stance. Uh, where is your best power line? Meaning, which direction can you generate energy and force if you're using horse stance? Which direction? Side to side. Yeah, exactly. How about front to back? No, no. Huh? Not very much. But Not much, right? Why would you stand like that with your groin exposed in a fight, for example? So it's not so useful. But if you look at kata like table soda, you have this, where in the home, wide horse stands, you, you strike it in front of you. That's like a, a challenge right there. Now what's that about? So, anyway, back to your horse stands. Like any stance, I don't know if you were, were talking about, what, what's the purpose of kata this stance? What do you think? Either to hold your ground or to generate power. Okay, I won't disagree with that, right? So it's, it's basically how you how your body relates to the floor. Yeah. So using your legs to connect to the floor, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So knowing about your knee and foot relationship, how would you do a horse stance? Knees over the center two toes. Center toes. So, so is knees. that how would you do it? How would you do it? You just have like some stability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say if you're standing in front of a wall, okay, and you're gonna make your knee cap touch the wall. Okay. 
Can you make them touch so that it's, it's flush to the wall, so that your kneecap is not hitting the wall like that in an angle? Um, okay, it's great. So I feel like your left knee is fine, but somehow your right knee is kind of squirting slightly off to the right. Okay. Now, can you activate your hamstrings? You know, make this muscle come on? Can you? Okay. Now then, your upper groin muscle is trying to squeeze towards each other. There you go. Great. So that's your horse stance. So, how does that feel? Very tense. Tense. <laughs> Uh, really well, well, it's going to be like a learning curve where some of the muscles may not be strong enough for you to hold that position. Eight. You might be feeling fatigued. Okay? Okay. Other than that, though, in the horse stance, you want to take up any slack so that you, if, my, this, if these are my legs, right? Yes. I, want to, I want to hold the ground and pull them to the center so that. So, if someone were to just suddenly pick you up, your legs would come together. Does that make sense? If someone just pick you up, your legs would come together because they have this internal, I guess, to the center. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you could hold that and just train your muscles. Yes. You know, maybe at first, 30 seconds is going to be all you could do. Then over time, 30 minutes is going to be no problem. Especially if, you, if you're specializing in kind of like jutsu, you have to learn this. So you like that in this case? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. So now, position the shoulders so that they kind of connect to your hips. Okay. O style jute, by the way, is done actually this way. That was how they did it. Really? Does that make more sense? Kind of. I mean, that goes in. Yeah. And it's like this. This, is, yeah. this one. You think, you know, like, what, what is this, okay? Sometimes the client jute is done with a ball. So if you're holding a ball this way or this way, I mean, it, it, might, it might make some, some sense, okay? But, but still, you're doing an empty hand, so, you know. If it's meant for ball, then use the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you not just both cut with no ball? <laughs> Anyway, so if it's empty hand, oftentimes hands work together, meaning usually if, if one controls opponent, the free hand will actually strike the opponent. Okay? Could be either side. If I'm controlling with this hand, I'm going to strike with this one. Okay? So you always have this kind of relationship. So whatever you do, try to connect the arm. I like it more like that. So now, so you can see this engagement. Okay. This is not good for your shoulder, shoulder lights like about this position. So it's not flat, it's like a little bit like this. Like that. Okay. Like that. So it has this look versus like that. This, like that. I feel like the arm hip muscle and my hips are like kind of peace. Now on the next move, okay, is I lift the knee. I want that knee to come really close to the other knee like you do in front kick. See? Yep, then you're gonna drop. Back up to the previous position. 
Try to get the same connection on your land. There you go. See? Eight like that. See? You shouldn't be resisting with your shoulders, but that's going to connect to your hips, so your, your legs can be behind that resistance. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. You push that in, you push the blade in. See? Your head's going to be like that. Like that. Okay, by the way, this principle comes from here on Sunday. Okay? You know, you got this, and it's the same as this, this structure. Okay? So this one is just like that. There you go. So that knee closer than me. And you're going to drop. Okay, so I, I, I kind of like the connection now. Like that, like that. So, uh, wh where does this happen in the Kata? I'm trying to think of. Okay, it's right here. Right? So, one, two, three. That's where it starts. Okay. Go ahead. So this is kind of working during the week. Okay, let's try again. Okay, so when this leg goes up, I'm, I'm keeping this, it's gonna it's gonna push just a little bit, okay? That, that's the idea of what they call stretch reflex. But uh, when you come up, you just kind of yeah, drop it. Three of these, right? Eight. So you went dun, dun, dun. Okay. Okay. This this is common. If someone who's doing payan sanda, for example, anyone's gonna do hand sanda? Okay, okay. When the when the passing leg lawyers right here, then you're gonna get stuck here. Okay? Energy that you have built up ends here. So meaning for me to get power from here, I'm just using gravity. I'm just falling. That the first half really didn't matter. Does that make sense? Yes. So, that's what you're doing, Drew. You're here. Right around here, like that. You're balancing on this leg, that means your momentum stopped. You're actually decelerating, not accelerating. Okay, watch. So, I'm going to take my arm out so you can see my hips. This leg is going to go right here. What's the difference? This is what you do. But I'm gonna this is gonna go right to the center. Like that. You're right to the center. Like that. Better. That's better. Mm -hmm. Better. Yes. Okay. So that's starting to get better. Okay. We're not done. <laughs> you asked for it. <laughs> Go. Okay, good. See his pivoting? That's real classic. If you're not really watching for where the pivot is occurring, your body will use two. You'll use heel and ball as combination. Okay? What I mean by that is this. You're going to start like that. What, what's that? It's heel. Mm -hmm. Then right around the middle, you kind of come to the ball like that. So it's actually a kind of sloppy way to do it. Okay? Reason why that happens naturally is when your stance pressure is on the heel, like that. So when I get the knee over the second pole, now I have better control of the ball of foot. Okay? Okay. You can do that method of heel pivot. Okay? I'll go on record to say it. You can. It's fine. Okay? But if you ever observe dancers, how many, how many times have you seen heel pivot on a dancer? Yes. If you ever go to a dance school, take a dance class, they tell the teacher, can I heel pivot? <laughs> it's not okay if I just heel pivot. And, you know, what would that teacher say? You know? I mean, it's almost like saying, I mean, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> okay. So I would, I would pivot on the ball because if you look at the anatomy of the foot, it's, it's really well designed to pivot on this point versus here. Like, can you, how hard is the balance on your heel, for example? Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that is getting smoother looking. Uh, okay, 
As Lindsay is really, when we're doing the back kick, we're doing the pivot, we just got to really do the yes. pivot. Let's call it exactly. making it be active. Yep, exactly. Now that we're starting to connect the principles, which is really good. Okay, so we have to actively move this knee like that. Yes. yes. There you go. That was not bad. Ah, he on. Seems like he does that pause in the middle when he does that heel. There you go. That was awesome. Yeah, so say, would this apply to Gion too? Because you got a lot of something similar. So, Jute, Gion, Gien, the three katas are related. Yeah. And, and you're going to have similar mechanical riddles. Yeah, you got the palm strikes. Okay. You have enough to kind of work on that? This. Okay. <laughs> Any other kata? Yes. So the, the four stance transitions of Sangdan uh, from here, one, two, three, and four, very hard to do all four transitions clean. Uh, what's the key to good transitions in that sequence? Uh, it depends on where you are in, in, in this kata, like, like where you are in terms of developing. And it's always good to start with four separate stances. So you did four, four, and not so much trying to connect them. It's just do them best you can each stance. So first one's a back stance, right? Yeah. Then if you have showman, you, you should be pretty much like this. Which is square the hips up and thrust with the rear leg. So that's going to be. Okay. Then you're going to on the ball of the foot, and it's like doing a back kick, that knee will go inward as you slide that back foot through. Yep. In the landing of the horse, there's going to be a big challenge right there. Okay. That's the hardest one. Mm -hmm. then, then, and again, if my, my foot position, if my weight is on the heel or the mid foot, I'm going to naturally pivot like that. Okay. Okay. Again, this one's not wrong either, but you know, people, this is the most common one. But personally, I like, if I add the groin muscle, I'm going to, like that. I'm driving this leg with the ball of my foot, and this one's going to, like that. Yeah, like that. I had a big debate with one of the, one of the instructors once, and he was a big heel pivoter, and he's like, my way of ball is like, it's too slow. You're never going to get enough speed on that. So. I personally can't see it like that. So. so do them separately. Really get them correctly. Then as you improve those sets of stances, there's four of them, then they'll naturally tie together. Because the stance, once you get them correctly, it's very easy to tie to the next one. He's the time of the next one. Okay? He just gives you that every time. So. Okay. Anything else? We have time. A couple more minutes. And you cut the question. Hi, Andy. John. That sequence, just that part? Yep, the whole, the whole, and then all the way. Okay. Next move. Okay, right there. Okay, so that's the sequence. Okay, go ahead. One. <coughs> okay, so the main one. Okay, let's try. Keep going. Go. Okay, so let's come to this side. This is what he called that. Jew called that. He actually hit with this. Okay. Originally, you put your thumb right here. It's not a punch, so you go this way. 
this is hitting the trachea. Mm -hmm. okay. Positions here, huh? One set. Mainly, you reduce the profile because you want it to dry up the chest. So, so this palm glides along the chest and hits this upward. But anyway, they eventually turn to a regular drawdown line. But this cut that actually is a, you have to turn it right away and you kind of line up. And uh, you know really thrust? It's a, like a jackhammer line. So it's going to go like that. Okay. And then is that a grip to take in? Where you can can be. Can be. That's where you have this. Press. Can be. OK, anyway. I'm getting off the track here. So we're not done. You gotta fix something. Okay. Now go ahead. Next part. Right there. Okay. So where does his knee go? Up. Up. That means his energy went like that. Mm -hmm. Then he went like that. Whereas you want him to go like this. So when his knee comes up, he needs to help you go forward. So the moment that you went knee up or like that, it should be more straight. I want mine to be more straight. Yes. So, so, can you hear me? I like that, like that. Now, now, bend the knee a little bit right there. Right. So, this is the position you want to be. Okay? Like that. So, you are like that. That's where you are. Then you lean forward and back. So, that's where you're going to be, right? Okay. So, you can put the knee forward. Okay, but if you add this, this, that, that throws the whole thing up. You're adding another step, okay? To so keep your spine straight. You don't need any, any tilting back. Okay, good. Okay. So that part's getting better. Can you show me again? Okay. So there's some passive motion here. Okay? And this is where it happens. MP is notorious. Okay? People that get good with this, they don't know why they're good at it. They just are. Okay? Okay. So when this knee goes forward, when this lands, okay, when this lands, you got to pay attention to this leg. Like that. You have to suck that back leg right in. Huh? You got to make this leg really fast to, to match the front leg that lands. Try it. It's too slow. Too slow. Yeah. You can get it. This leg comes too slow. So knee forward, fast back leg. That's better. That's better. Okay. Mm -hmm. That time he got there so early, his punch was late. Mm -hmm. okay. That's that's really good good problem. Mm -hmm. Now he does so early. Okay. Once more. Once more. Oh Quick. You hold it, hold it. Now, oftentimes, the body will lean and the leg falls there. Okay? So, I don't want you to go fall and let the leg go past. You have to take this leg and shoot it behind you really fast. You're faster than that. You can get faster. It's like doing a back kick into the floor. Like, back kick really fast. Look at that. Now you got extra speed. Yes. Now the shoulder's late, so you have to figure out how to, how to get the shoulder to go fast. Now your foot's going really fast. There you go. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Maybe two corners, not four. Make it make it straight. Stay there. Stay there. There you go. It's not, not. That's the feeling right there. You could be there and angle. You could be angle like this. You don't need this, it's more like this. There you go. Too much, too much, too much. Too much. You're going to wait too much like this. Like that. Okay, again. From here. From here. Just left leg forward. Alright, so don't go up now, the knee goes forward. A quick foot. Stop right there. Yeah, see the punch is too late. Punch is too late. You need one up. You need one up. 
with the knee forward. There you go, that's the best one. Now, make your left leg, your back leg, move really fast. Now, I'll pass you some. Uh -huh. Don't do this now. Like that, don't do that. I gotta shoot this leg back. Shoot this leg back, this leg go, turn, like that, you turn, go, turn, yes, like that, Bang like this. Okay, one more, put it again. Knee forward, knee forward. Okay, okay, quick, go. Okay. I want to see you hit, cut. Faster, okay? Better? Huh? This is where exactly you say cross key. You cut with the head. It's not a rotation. See, the, the English rotation doesn't sound like cross key. Cross key is a key. So you're going to cut like that. Like this knife, cut it. Slice. There you go. Okay, is that good? Damn, good enough. So you did you did you lost it on a bit of uh, so you like this, okay? See my energy like this, and it's gonna go boom, like that, push into the floor. Yeah, you can do that like that. Okay, now you put it all together. No gaps. Cut it. Cut. Yes. Get that two cross key. Your hip cuts twice. So you here, the first cut. Oh, Right, like that. The first cut in slow motion I showed. So it's gonna go cut, right? Then cut and cut. Two cuts. Second one is harder because you, you don't have much room. Alright, try. How do I how do I get? No, 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 put knee forward. One, cut, cut. Okay, you hold your breath the whole time. You didn't put it into the floor. Try again. One, two, three. Too sloppy there. Too sloppy. You're rushing. Rushing. Don't go so fast. Try it again. Knee forward. One. Hold on. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, good. Cut. Okay. Your hand is ugly right there. So. Cut. The next one. Go. Stay. No. Stay. Stay. No. Stay. No. Oh. Um, come up a little bit. Yes, like that, like that. Oops. Uh, with you, I, I love lots of these kind of uh, packing up feedback because it's almost like you're talking to their body more than their, their brain. Mm -hmm. Just kind of like it. Not quite there. See how there's a lot of looseness when I push? There you go, right there. There. Now it's like solid, right there. You can't forget this video. The yeah, last one, you do. You may be like, okay, let's try again. <laughs> one, two. No, I'm right, it's too fast. You can't go that fast now because you're relearning it right there. Oh. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. One. Hold it. Fix your position. The back leg is gone. So when it's like that, it's already gone. You have to, you have to dig into the floor. Yes, and cut. Press. Okay, that was good. That was good. Thank you. <laughs> 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 So, well, if you get the whole kata like that, you know, that's more like old fashioned karate style. Thank Easy, one to one, you nitpick the death. Okay, this the old Japanese way. Because it's, it's never going to be right. That's the way it is. It's just, uh, regardless of your rank, there's always something to work on. Something, something is not quite so.
it's not about attaining perfection, it is moving towards it. That's, that's the main point of this kind of art form. Your goal is keep. <laughs> All right, we're done for the night. Thank you for your patience. So young man, show me. Sensitive. Break. Okay. Good job, everyone. Thank you for coming. That was awesome. What's the more schedule? Uh, 9 a.m. is the first class. And then we go to, yeah, so 9 to 11, and we break for an hour for lunch. And then there's a session from 12 to 2. And then 2, you know, on break. Okay, got it. So, busy day tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. Adults can go to, anybody can go to any of those classes. Guys, we've, I've learned more at the kids' class than I would at the adults' class. So you just don't have to shy away from going to the all kids' class. It's not really a kids' class, it's a great prep, you know. So yeah. that's, that's, that's kids are welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. Excellent. Thank you. So, uh, how are you doing? Everywhere is, is Finn still open? Do you know Finn, Finn is still open? Or is anyone still open? Okay. So, sushi? Sure. Is that good? Okay. So, <laughs> if, if Finn's still open, we'll go, we'll go there. And that's just right across the street. So, let's see Okay. Cool. Hey, guys. Every, every other week. Can you keep still being empty? Hi. No, no, what are we doing now? I've been starting on two. That's the hardest. You pick the hardest one. You know how hard that is? My goodness. That'll take you the rest of your life. That's good. You like it? I think so. I'm still struggling with getting up after the kicks. And how about the double kick? Can you help with that? It's, it's better than the four. Say your name again. 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 Okay, little tip. When you do the first round house kick, use the momentum for the next. So it's gonna go kick, kick, mm -hmm. kick, kick. So that's the trick. I think it's it's like you come all the way to the side. You wanna be actually more spun, yeah, like yeah. that. Like that. But then I'm kicking like this. Oh yeah, but but you are. It's not. This is not really kicking somebody. So you would kick someone. So it's not. It's not that. Okay. So you got the the return. And then I'm taking my whole bone. So when I kick, I just gonna go. So use this elbow. When I kick, I use my right elbow. What happens when I kick? Boom! Boom! What happens when I break like two hours? Yeah, okay, spin off. Like this, and you do the first kick like that. 